Oka, Jisia Halwa, Winger, you bear Kangwen, Winger Kusko, welcome you, Mumsa Rachel, you, and your whole review. Hi, my name is Quentin Simeon. My Yupik name is Jisia. I'm a Yupik man and I come from the Kusko River, uh, particularly the villages of Bethel or Mumsa Rachel and Aniak or Anyarak um, in Yupik. And today, <clears throat> I'd like to tell a story about Raven and um, how he got married to the mink. I guess we'll start like that. So, Akatamani, long time ago, Raven was walking along on the beach, kind of beach like my background there. He's just kind of hopping along and he sees a uh, a mitten and this mitten is all torn up and threads all taken apart and it's got torn pieces here and torn pieces there and holes ripped in its in the, in the skin and fabric and stuff and, and he's saying oh man you better watch out there's this boot down there and his just mean he came up and he tore me up and he ripped me to pieces that darn boot he was just being mean that kamaksak over there he was just no good so he was like oh man I'll, I'll look out for him sorry man I didn't know that, that he, sorry that that happened to you and so he kept on walking and he kept going and Pretty soon he comes up to this kamaksak or, or boot and he's like, uh, hi, you know, he's like, oh, hi, man, I got torn up by this mitten. He came up and he just tore me up and he was just mean and he did all this stuff and he poked holes in me and, and he tore off my threads and took out everything. And man, that, that poor mitten up there, he was just mean. And Ray was like, oh, man, poor guy. I'm really sorry that that happened to you. I wish I could help you out. And so he left them both. He just kind of let them go and he kept on moving on his way. And so Raven was, you know, hopping along down the beach. And uh, out in the water, he saw some beluga whales. They were just surfacing as they were swimming, looking for some some tomcod or something like that at that time. <clears throat> and so Raven starts watching these beluga whales that are out there on the water. He says, oh, look at those beluga whales. They're pretty, pretty big bunch of them out there. So he takes off and he starts flying and he starts looking at them. There's this one big bull beluga whale and it's just magnificent, just white and gleaming and humongous, just way bigger than all the rest of them. And Raven's kind of impressed with this, uh, with this beluga whale. And uh, like, wow, that guy's you know, pretty impressive. And then pretty soon he starts showing off that beluga whale. He was showing off, trying to um, make big splashes and spins in the air and trying to do fancy stuff when he was trying to land. And so Raymond was like, whoa, that's a little bit too much. You know, you're trying to show off a little bit too hard over there, maybe. And Raymond gets jealous. Once in a while, I don't like people showing off. So um, Raymond's going to go and check out this beluga whale you know, talk to him and see how come his why is so cocky maybe. So he takes off and starts flying closer and he gets right above the water. He's flying right above the water. And he sees this blue whale starts to come up and he gets a breath of air and his blue whale looks up and he sees Raven over there. He's like, Toluco, Raven, what are you doing here? And Raven's flying. So I was like, man, I was flying over there and I saw you swimming over here and I had to come over and check you out until you're the most magnificent whale I've ever seen. You're just the most beautiful beluga I've ever seen. And the beluga whale keeps on swimming. He comes back up and he goes, I know. 
And that didn't sit quite right with Raven, I don't think, because he kind of got under his skin. He goes, I'm trying to get this Bluga's attention and is not, you know, paying attention to Raven like he should. So next time he comes up and he's like, what are you, what you're still doing here, Raven? He's like, oh, I had to talk to you. I was thinking about, you know, how magnificent you are. And um, I wanted to, to give you some advice on how to make your magnificence even more spectacular. And what I think you should do is swim down as deep as you can and then turn around and start swimming to the surface as fast as you can. And once you get up to the surface, right before you break the surface of the water there, open your mouth real wide and all the animals will be able to see just how magnificent and spectacular you are. And Blue thought about that for a second. He was like, hmm, maybe I could do that. So he went down, he took a deep breath. And he went down and down and down and he turned around and he started coming up to the surface really fast. Coming up and right before we got up there, he opened his mouth real wide and he broke the surface of the water and then boom, Raven shot down right into his throat. Next thing you know, Raven is inside, deep inside this blue whale, and it's real dark and he can't see nothing. And he's looking around and oh, way over there, he thinks he might be able to see something, maybe a bright light, something is shiny or just light over there. So yeah, he's gonna go and take a look. So he starts going along, going along and looking for this place and he can't see too good. So he's feeling his way around, trying to get his way to this light. And sure enough, he gets closer. And he sees that this thing is a nut or a house inside of this beluga whale. And so he goes over and he checks out this beluga whale house. And he goes inside, he stands inside by the door. And uh, there's this girl sitting there and she's got a big bowl of tom cod and seal oil, just mixing it together. And she goes, what you're doing here, Raven? And Raven goes, oh, I was just in the neighborhood and I was looking for um, something to eat because I'm hungry. And he's like, oh, you're hungry? Come on in, come in into the house, sit down. Have a seat, I'll give you some Tom Cod. And so she gave him that big bowl of Tom Cod and seal oil that she had mixed together. And so Raven ate it up. He just gobbled up. Oh, that was so good. He had such a good meal, that Raven. But he was still hungry. He still wanted more food. And he says, Kai, ba. And that woman goes, you're still hungry? Yeah, I'm still hungry. Well, I have no more food in here. I'll have to go out and get something to eat. And uh, you'll have to wait here for me. And Raven's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll wait. And so he sits down, he relaxes. And she gets ready to go and she goes off and grabs her boots and turns around right before she's going to head out the door. And she goes, Raven, right before uh, I go, I wanted to remind you that um, those, that light over there, you're not supposed to touch it. Don't touch that light over there. Whatever you do, don't touch that light. And Raven's like, okay, I'm not going to touch that light. I don't need to touch that light. He goes, okay, I'll be back with some more Tom Cod in a bit. So she leaves, she takes off. And Raven sits there and he waits and waits and waits long time. He waits and waits. Oh, and about five minutes later, man, he was just tired of waiting. He just couldn't wait no more. 
So he got up and he started looking around and walking around, looking at things and seeing this and that. And he looked at that light. Hmm. That light sure is pretty. I wonder how come she didn't want me to look at that light over there. That's a pretty good light. I'm kind of curious about it. I kind of want to touch it. I kind of want to reach for it a little bit. But I shouldn't touch it. Maybe I should though, because it's so pretty. I wonder why I shouldn't be able to touch it. Maybe, no, I shouldn't touch it. But no, but maybe I should. Maybe, hmm. nah, I should, maybe, no. Nah. <sighs> and he turned out the light as soon as he touched it. And it was pitch black and it all just closed up in on him. And so Raven is stuck in the dark and he can't see and he's just in there. And he feels himself starting to move around and rocking back and forth and back and forth. And he feels himself kind of wash up. And he washed up again and he washed up again. And he landed and he was stuck there inside of this beluga whale. And he was in there for a long time, maybe longer than five minutes. And so he's in this beluga whale belly and he hears something outside. He's like, what is that? What is it? It's maybe voices. Maybe human voices, and they're getting closer. Pretty soon he can understand what they're saying. And they're saying, hey, there's this beluga whale on the beach. I wonder what happened to it. It's got no holes in it. It's got no marks on it. Doesn't look sick. It doesn't have any sickness or sores or nothing. It just, it's perfect. I wonder how it died. I wonder how it got here. They're like, man, we should, we should definitely start packing this up. This is a gift. We should just pack this up. And so they start to open this up and get this uh, these beluga parts ready to go. And they start to open up the belly to get the guts out. And as soon as they put their knife in there and open it up just a little bit, Raven flew out of the belly and into the sky and started circling around. He circled around for a little bit and he landed on the bluffs um, watching these guys where this beluga had washed up. And he watched them pack it up, pack it up and they corked it up and made two totally equal uh, sections that they could all haul back to their village. And so right as they were getting all done, Raven, he flew down. He flew down, he was gonna go ask those guys, hey, you should share with me a little bit. And so they went down to them and he landed right there. He goes, oh. Those guys, they looked at him. Oh, Raven, what you're doing here? Oh, I was watching you guys from up on that bluff for a while and I was uh, admiring your meat and I was wondering if you might be able to share a little bit. And like, oh man, we don't, we don't have any to share. We, we just split it up evenly. He's going to bring some to his family and I'm going to bring some to mine. And, and then that's, uh, that's all we got. We've already got it split up fair and share. And we don't want to take the time to get that uh, redivided out if we're going to share with some with you. And then it was all oh, shucks. Um, you know, now that I think about it, I don't think I want what you guys, because actually, you know, as I was watching you from up there on the bluff and you, when you started to cut open the belly, I could swear I think I saw something black fly out of its belly and I don't think I'd want to eat anything that happened to that, that happened like that to, to something I was going to eat, you know? And, uh, 
Raven goes, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just want to let you know. And so he takes off and flies back to the block. And so Raven's sitting up there and he's watching those guys down there. And they start talking to each other. He goes, yeah, I think I remember seeing something like that. I remember, and it even made like a wind go by my face when it come out. It was so fast, though, I thought it was maybe just in my mind. And, you know, I think I've seen the, that raven, he eat that mushroom fish, those half spawned out ones that are just almost dead. He'll eat those fish on the beach. He'll eat their eyeballs. He don't care. I don't know if I want to eat something that Raven won't eat because he'll eat anything. Gee, maybe you're right, the other guy said. Yeah, maybe we should probably just leave these here. It might not be the best. So yeah, if Raven won't eat it, we'll leave these here. We'll just go back to our village. And so sure enough, they took all that time to quarter up and make that blue into real good chunks. And so they left and left that beluga down there. And so Raven got so excited. He had two big things of beluga meat. He was going to be set for the winter. He wouldn't have to worry about food all winter long. And so he went down and he started to grab this first bag and bring it, start bringing it up this whole thing of uh, beluga whale, bringing it up to the bluff. He didn't want it to get eaten up when the tide was coming in. And so he started getting it right to maybe about a quarter way up the mountain of the bluff. And uh, he had to stop and take a break. Boy, it was hard work, lots of meat. He was having a hard time. And he sits there and he takes a break and he hears something up behind him. And he looks up behind him and he says, oh, there's a, there's a mink up there. He says, hey, mink, what you're doing? That mink is kind of skirting the top of the bluff, just kind of looking at Raven down there. And she's all, ah, hungry. What you got? You got beluga down there? Like, yeah, I got lots of beluga. I'll share it with you if you help me haul it up the hill. She's like, I don't know if I trust you. You're always tricky. And Raven's like, no, if you haul it up, with, I'll give you a piece. You better give me a piece now. I'm like, no, I don't want to give it to you now. You got to wait till you work it. I'm not going to just give it to you. You might just eat it and run. How do I know you'll give it to me when we get to the top? How do I know you won't be stingy? I'll give you, don't worry. Okay. And so she goes down. And she grabs some of that, that beluga and she starts hauling it up. And she works really hard. And Raven grabs the corner of it. And he helps, and he helps get that that thing to the top. And boy, she's got that whole thing, and she's carrying it up real tough. And she gets it to the top, and Raven helps to get it to the top, and they put it on the top. Oh boy, she's like, I need to take a break. And he's, we go, let's go get the other one, and then I'll then you can have some some meat. And she's like, do you? I we. Just let me have some now and then I'll have energy to go get the one down there. Like, no, let's go get it first. And so Raven convinces her that she can go and get the other one with him. And so she goes down and she helps bring up that next thing and she carries it again, really big, big. And Raven too, he helps, he grabs it and helps bring it up on that big hill. They finally get it up to the top and boy, she's real hungry after that. Oh, she's just hungry. <sighs> so she sits down and Raven gives her some really good pieces of meat. He did give her something. So she gets really happy and they sit there on the bluff watching the sunset, watching that. And so, <sighs> what a beautiful day they sit there and Raven is just happy, you know, and they're like, you know, we should try winter together this fall. You know, you got really good work and I can go and hunt. I'm a good provider. I catch lots of beluga. And I'll be a good husband for you this winter and we should winter together. And so she's like, nah, I don't like you. You're tricky and you always do crazy stuff. And 
I don't know if you'll be a good partner with me. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll be. Look at how good provider I am. I brought this whole beluga up and you only had to pack it up the, the, the hill just a little bit. And I hunted that thing all day long and you never even hunted with me. And I did so much of this work and cut it up and everything. And you just packed it up the hill. And she's all like, well, yeah, maybe this, but you did lots of work before I even got here. And um, yeah, you might, you might be a good partner, maybe, I think. And so they sit there for a while and they eat more of that beluga and um, have some more of that muktuk. And, um, they eat some more. And she's like, yeah, sure, we can, we can partner up this, this winter. And, we can we can make that work and so sure enough they get they get over to her place and he brings over all that beluga to them and they store it up in the frozen ground for the winter time and uh, they get ready for the winter and so pretty soon it's fall time and they got ready to go and raven's like we better start getting ready to get lots of firewood i'm going to go out and start collecting firewood so whenever i go out this time i want you to bring me um, make me some aguda for when I get home. And so Raven, he goes off and he tries to find some firewood. And he's gone for a long time. And so his wife, the mink, she starts sewing on his beluks before he, she go. And she's sewing, she's sewing, she's sewing her husband's beluks, his boots. And she's like, oh, I better get the aguda ready before he comes home. And so she goes and she grabs some berries and she pulls them in. And she goes and finds some seal oil and she pulls that in. And she comes and finds some white fish and she pulls that in too. And so she took the berries and she broke those up to the winter. Oh, All right, my phone rang. Um, and then she grabbed the blueberries and she grabbed the seal oil and she took the white fish and she boiled that up. And then she took off the brown fat from, a, from it and she took out all the bones and she squeezed out all the juices from it until it was just like a meat pulp with almost no flavor. It didn't even smell like nothing. And then she mixed that with the seal oil and then she mixed that in with some of the berries and she started to mix it together. Her hand got just frozen and cold and she had to stop and put it away for a minute. And so she's sitting there and it's just quiet. And outside she hears something and it says, Come, you love, come, you love. If you don't give me your good up, I'm gonna eat you. And she gets just scared and just thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? So she takes a little bit of the spoonful and she throws it out the door. And outside you hear, um, 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 um. Uh, excuse me. Come you up, come you up. If you don't give me your good luck, I'm gonna eat you. And so she throws the whole bowl out there. And outside she hears. Excuse me. And she hears. Come you love. Come you love. And the mink inside she goes. I have no more akodak. You ate it all. Go away. So she went back and she started to sew her husband's beluga. She had no more akura. And when her husband came home, he comes in and he is just tired and he comes in just forlorn and tired. And so his wife comes up to him and she goes, oh, my husband, 
I couldn't make a good. I made some and then somebody came and they asked, hey, come you ma, come you ma. If you don't give me your akurak, they were going to eat me. So I gave up all the akurak, I threw it out. I was like, oh man, I just wanted to come home and have some akurak. And I didn't get no akurak, I'm so sad. But that's okay. I didn't find firewood either, so I don't know. I'll try again tomorrow. And if you can try and make me a akurak tomorrow, that would be just good. So sure enough. He went out that next morning and he went up to go find some more firewood. And she started in the day and she started sewing on her husband's funeral and sewing and sewing. And then after a while, she went and grabbed some more berries and some more seal oil and some more white fish. And she boiled the white fish and she got out the bones and she took out the fat and she squeezed it until there was no more juice in the fish. And then she mixed that with the berries and the seal oil. And she mixed it until it went thup, 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 She got that good up just right. And so she put down the good up and she sat down and she was going to work on her husband's video book some more. And so she sat down. And she's sitting there and she's waiting and so and waiting and so and waiting. And outside she hears something. And it says, Come, come, if you don't give me your akuna, I'm gonna eat you. And so she took one spoonful of akuna and she threw it out the door. Excuse me. Come on. And she looked at her bowl of a gulak. And she looked at her spoon. And she looked at her gulak. And she was I'm not going to give him anymore. This is the last of my gulak. I can't share it no more. And so she put it down and she waited. And she listened. And she looked and she grabbed a stick from the fire. And when that thing said, come, she threw that stick as hard as she could out the window. And outside you hear, oh! And so she went back and she sat down and she was sewing her husband's blue. And a couple minutes later, after she was sewing, somebody was at the door and she could hear somebody stumbling around outside. And so she goes and checks and it's her husband and is coming home. And she says, what's the matter, husband? What's the matter? Oh, my poor husband, let me look at you. Come here, and this, her husband's just squinting his eye. He's coming in, and he's like, oh, but I was flying. I was flying through the woods, and a big stick poked me in the eye. Oh, come here, lay down, let me look. And so she opens up his eyeball, and inside there's a big charcoal, and she plucks it out, and she throws her husband off of her head. We're laughing, you go sleep outside. You're not staying with me. You're a tricky. You're the one that ate all my akura. Do I? That's the end of the story. Thank you.